through. T take that left hand. Madrid spins into that. Oh, oh Hart, he's out. Oh, my goodness. Damian Anderson puts a... Man, oh, Gary Tony's like a fight like Drip on that leg. Gary oh, oh. Gary 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 Hi, this is Shedi and today I want to discuss the common problems in Judo and BJJ. These videos are not to show that, look, this is the problem with BJJ and Judo is better. It's none of that at all. The thing is, BJJ is Judo. Neiwaza, the fundamentals, the passing, the guard game, the top game, the pins, all of it is from Judo and it is a part of Judo. But the problem that I have with what's happening today with BJJ and Judo, Judo has its own problems and I get to them, is that when you go and specialize in something so deeply and you go with it far too long and then you get it back to where it should be, which is actual fighting that involves grappling and striking, a lot of the time we lose sight uh, of the martial value of it and the martial capacity of it and this is the end result. Uh, you know, dropping for guard and leg locks and uh, the other thing is, you know, the, the card pulls, uh, those dangerous card pulls on yourself and on your partner and forgetting dangers such as the slam. Here you can see this white belt uh, fight. That is, this is extremely dangerous. I am not against the slam in the sense that it is a disqualification. I am against it for, you know, of course, danger and safety. You want to keep doing this as long as you could for the rest of your life, as I should say. But um, the high lift such as Daki Age in my opinion should be a an immediate win in both Judo and BJJ. In Judo the moment the head gets off the ground or there's no contact on the ground anymore it is mate it's stopped while in BJJ the slam is uh, illegal and a lot of people try to reach the back and do things and they think they're better grappler while in fact they can be easily slammed and get it over with. Daki Age should be an immediate win in both. I'll give you a judo example, like here for example Fabio Vasile going for Tomanage. Shohei Ono easily lifts him. How easy would it have been to just slam him? Now, here's where I really am proud of being a judoka is those picturesque throws like this. Skuinage being found in MMA against Rose and it's, it was an immediate uh, KO. And that's the other thing, that's the problem with Judo now, it is the whole leg grab thing. As the kings of throws, as we like to portray ourselves, you should be able to both attack the entire body and defend it. Now this is my sole problem and of course the lack of Newaza training in so many clubs and so many countries and the separation between the two. Now, you want to have a... Um, separation or an emphasis on a particular part of grappling sure but to lose a part for another part to me that's not a good thing like as you can see here even like the first throw in nage no kata which is uki otoshi it was done in the octagon in the ufc and it even caused a ko one of the rarest throws in judo and look what it did in the octagon so whether you wanna you know focus on the stand up like you know kodokan judo or while you want to go you know strictly on the ground and really focus on the ground we should not neglect the other side of grappling which is the stand up or the ground so what i'm trying to say is the the problem for simply in bjj is that you know it's specialized in so many things that are highly technical that takes a lot of years and mastery to develop but when you put it back in its initial context, like the Perimbolo, for example, you can see that this is not a, a good thing to be doing. Or, for example, Worm Guard or Lapel Guard. In a strictly grappling format, sure, it's great. And look at all these champions like the Meow Brothers, uh, Keenan Cornelius, and I can name a bunch more. However, we should always be taught, you know, as the you know, Henner and Heron are doing the, the 32 principles that, you know, whatever context you are put in, you should know what you should be doing. Uh, Hickson and his uh, you know, self-defense uh, emphasis, even though he does a lot of rolling, etc. Um, on, the, on the street, you don't quote roll, but nonetheless, the emphasis, it still be there. You can do whatever you want. This is the idea. You can do whatever uh, you want, but in my opinion, we should not uh, lose 
the martial capacity of an art simply because of how these rules are now painted or for example lose aspect of an art simply because of rules um, for example in judo my problem is you don't want to practice newaza you don't like it i'm totally fine with it you know i'm not who am i to judge your preference but the transition is still very much there in competition and it is very much uh, important look at all the wins that are happening by pins by arm locks and of course by the strangles so i really should i really think at least transitions should be studied far more and practiced far more a lot of the times we just drop and they're like okay let's just stop and let's go back up so much so that whenever we are put in the slightest inconvenience in newaza we just tap at a pin or we just uh, cannot defend an arm lock and transitions should be studied in, as a judoka who just loves uh, throws and you know you don't like rolling and you know when you're gonna go and compete you're gonna be like I'm not gonna be rolling so at least study transitions as if you are studying you know touchy touchy randori and for BJJ all I can say is I know a lot of guys a lot of friends who are BJJ black belts or are gonna be BJJ black belts and their end term goal is MMA or they already fight in MMA while they train BJJ just keep in mind uh, you know the whole context whether it's a strike whether it's the slam because you want to go to into the cage and that's it that's all my message for today these things can go wrong easily simply because we are focusing on a rule set or we can become specialized on one as aspect that is so much so that it is uh has drifted away from the reality of the martial art uh, itself baron bolos um no newaza or you know leg locks from guard where they're striking such as open palm strikes like in combat jiu-jitsu or mma gary tonin like i said in my gary tonin video uh, a few months ago gary tonin is one of the greatest grapplers on the planet alive today and the reason in my opinion from my assessment he is he was way too comfortable with his technique he got in way too many victories grappling with this style of you know winning the ashigarami battle as john danaher says and then getting the leg lock and and there were dire consequences to be paid when it was put in a different context again i said it in my gary tonin video and i'll say it in this video if this can happen to gary tonin then it will definitely happen to you so please be careful practice your heel hooks make sure maybe they are their hips are fully on the ground then you can attack it then their strikes are meaningless or make sure you are standing up and they're on the ground whatever it may be i'm sure you know more than me for the guys that are doing no gi and leg locks just be mindful of the context because maybe one day you're gonna have to take it outside maybe for self-defense maybe you want to go into the cage whatever it may be or combat jiu-jitsu and for judokas please be mindful at least of your transitions and if you can train leg grabs with the old folks or the older generation like i'm doing right now then that's great as well if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only but of course my main content will always be here on this channel so don't feel obliged this was shady and thank you for listening